Jeremiah chapter 34. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Now this keeps on, thus saith the Lord. The word that came from the Lord. The word that came unto Jeremiah. When Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and all his army, and all the kingdoms of the earth of his dominion, and all of the people, fought against Jerusalem, and against all the cities thereof, saying, Thus saith the Lord, there it is again, the God of Israel, that's often in Jeremiah, Go! There's that famous two-letter word. And speak to Zedekiah the king of Judah and tell him. So Jeremiah is going to go before the king. Jeremiah has been put in jail by the king. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will give this city to the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. So there's no more call to repentance. God's like, you had it, you're done, the cup is filled. And I wonder when America's going to get to that point. America is now announcing that in Iraq and Afghanistan, we're pulling out our military troops out of the enemy. We're letting criminals go free. And thou shalt not escape out of his hand. Now this is the, this is Zedekiah. But shall be taken, not the city, Zedekiah. And deliver into his hand. Thy eyes shall behold the eyes of the king of Babylon. And he, has, he shall speak with thee mouth to mouth. And thou shalt go to Babylon. That's Zedekiah. Yet hear the word of the Lord, O Zedekiah the king. Thus saith the Lord of thee, Thou shalt not buy, die by sword, but thou shalt die in peace, and with the burnings of thy fathers, the former kings which were before thee, so shall they burn olders, O-D-O-U-R, as we talked about Friday, about the King James Bible, music, M-U-S-C-I-M-U-C-I-K, M-U-S-I-C-K, O-D-O-U-R-S. That's the changes of the King James Bible. Some of the King, O-D-O-R. Neighbors, they took the U out. They didn't change the word. They just put the spelling up to date. I'd rather see the old spellings. I'd rather see the old way. I think Christians should go about the old English. For thee, and they will lament thee, saying, Ah, oh Lord. For I have pr pronounced the word, saith the Lord. Now there are some Bibles where the words are removed or changed. Replaced. Then Jeremiah the prophet spake all these words of Zedekiah the king of Judah in Jerusalem. When the king of Babylon's army fought against Jerusalem. And against all the cities of Judah that were left. Some have already gone. Some have already been taken captive against Lachish, against Ezekiah. And these defense cities, defense cities, remain to the sea. Uh, okay, these are the, the cities are a little bit more harder. But they're not defense cities when God's against them. You can have the greatest military in the world. But if God is your enemy, this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. After that, King of Zedekiah had made a covenant with the, all the people which were at Jerusalem to proclaim liberty unto them. So what happened is Zedekiah is proclaimed. 
everybody's got servants, let them go. Now, that's the law. You serve, we'll see in a moment. You serve six years, the seventh year, you go free. That's the law. That's the rest. That's proclaiming the liberty. But they've been violating that law. The Bible says that, you know, you sold the land six years, seven years, you give the land a rest. They've been violating that law. Work six days, the seventh day you rest. They've been violating that law. They were violating that law with Ezra and Nehemiah. Zedekiah said, let's do it. Let's go back to it. Every man should let his manservant, every man his maidservant, male and female, being a Hebrew or a Hebrewist. There you go. That's the only time that word shows up in the Bible. And it's, it's the female Hebrew. I wonder what modern Bibles do with that word. I don't care. I got a King James. Go free. That none should serve himself of them. To wit, to know, archaic great word of the King James Bible. To wit. It's to know so you're not a nitwit. I just made that up. Of a Jew his brother. Now when all the princes under the king, all the people which had entered into the covenant, all right, they agreed with the king, heard that everyone should let his main manservant and everyone his maidservant go free, and none should serve themselves of them anymore. Then they obeyed and let them go. Sounds great, doesn't it? But after as they turned and caused the servants and the handmaids, whom they had let go free, to return, and brought them on subjection of their servants and their handmaids. You know what's funny about America? We're the land of liberty. We're the land of freedom. We got liberty. And we are a nation that puts its people under the thumb school. Thumb screw, not school. We tax them on top of tax on top of a tax on top of a tax. And then we tax them even more. And then we law them to death. And we legislate them to death. And we license the death. And we are a land of freedom. People are so stupid today. They sing about great liberty. You ain't got no liberty. How come today with the freedom of speech... How come <laughs> the police department came to check the area out after complaints of a man preaching the gospel? <laughs> he wasn't there for checking the... He was there because he got complaints about us. And I'll do a walk-by just to see if he's really breaking the law, which we know he's not. <laughs> but we'll do a walk-by. That cop was there because they called the police on me. And they have heard the Constitution. They have heard the, the Supreme Court. They have heard the lesson on free speech. And they still attack me in the land of liberty. You believe that nonsense? You're a fool. You can't even have a yard sale without getting a permit. That's my five cents. I'll tax you later and figure out what the shipping and handling charge is. On a nickel that ain't a worth a nickel. Which probably costs more to make that nickel than the five cents that nickel is not worth today. All right, where was it? That was a bunny trail. That was free. Therefore the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus saith the Lord. How many times have we read that? The God of Israel. I made a covenant with your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bonded, bondmen, saying, you see that bondman? God set the nation of Israel at freedom, 
at liberty. You owe it to your maidservants and your manservants under the servitude. You owe them freedom. You know what is what was wrong with America and the slaves? They kept them. They kept them for X amount of years, more than six years, I would assume. We're the Christian nation. We're the nation under the Bible, correct? Then why didn't they serve for six years and you set them free for six seven. How long did the slave masters of the North and the South, I'm a Yankee from Connecticut, we kept slaves too in the North and kept slaves after the war in the North. Did you keep them more than six years? A Christian biblical nation? In 2021, even the employers don't give a liberty to their employees. That was 10 cents you owe me now. At the end of seven years, let, ev let ye go every man his brother and Hebrew. Now this is the Jewish law. But the law, we're not under the law for salvation, but, you know, the law serves principle on how God really feels. It would be perfectly honorable for a Christian not to commit adultery, not to bear false witness, not to take the Lord's name in vain. We don't honor the Sabbath day, but it would be wise to give your body a rest. Any doctor will tell you that. It would be perfectly honor for a Christian to not have not have idols, not to be coveting things, to honor your parents. That's not my salvation, but hey, that's a pretty good point. That you know, there are people out there we get Christian tattooed. Well, God says, I don't approve of that. And then we get people out there, under, you know, we're not under the law, and men should not wear what pertains to the woman, and the woman shall not prepare, prepare to, to the man. Hey, that's under the law. What are you doing quoting the law that we're not under the law? And by the way, the men wore the girdles, and the men wore the skirts. Where's your skirt? Oh, no, no, don't. Don't go yelling at me because, you know, I follow men who play the bagpipes. And I follow the Scottish soldiers. And I follow the, 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 the England and the authority of the Queen and all that. I, I know some of their history. And they wore kilts. And kilt is a skirt. And you're not going to make fun of them. Because you'll get the sword to chop off your head. Now, the law, again, is not salvation, but be perfectly proper. If you, got, if you had a slave, let him serve for seven years, then let him go. And there was a thing in the law, hey, I love working here. I love my wife. I love my children. You put a, a hole in his ear, and he continues to be your slave. But if he wants to go, there would not have been a whole bunch of hostility. And you would give him some money and say, hey, I want to stay in America or I want to go back home to Africa. You give him the choice. But then again, a lot of those slaves, by their slave book, they were treated well. Yeah, there were some treated rotten and terrible, but not as well as those who were treated properly. But the law of the of the Hebrews, the law of Israel is, hey, he worked seven years, you let him go at liberty. Which has been sold unto thee when he has served thee six years. Thou shalt let him go free from thee. But your fathers hearken not unto me, neither incline their ear. Well, they're not doing it now. Unto Zedekiah. And then they did it, and then they went back. And ye were now turned, 
and had done right in my sight. You did right. You let him go. <clears throat> and proclaiming liberty to every man his neighbor. Okay, that has a you in it. So you got to change the whole Bible because that you? Is that really a problem? And I guarantee for some, they didn't realize that, oh, yeah, there's a you in it. I never noticed that. And ye had made a covenant before me in the house. That's the temple, which is called by my name. So under Zedekiah said, okay, we're going to let him go. And God honored that. God honored their word. And they went back, and God's going to hold them to it. You better be careful what you say with your mouth. Jesus said, every idle word shall give an account. <clears throat> but ye churned and polluted my name. Now, how did they pollute the Lord's name? They made that covenant with God, so you know, in the name of Jehovah, we swear. Or in the name of the Lord, we will do. And they violated the name of the Lord by violating that covenant. And cause every man his servant, every man his handmaid, whom ye had set at liberty, they went free at their pleasure. Go do what you want. To return and brought them under subjection to be unto you for servants and handmaid. And I got to wonder. I wouldn't believe that many of them came back willingly. But by force. And some of them who were set free probably didn't, weren't given any money. So they were poor. And they were subject to come back just to make a living. That's America. If you don't believe that, you don't know how many of your veterans have no money and live on the streets. But your teenagers who make babies and make babies and make babies and make babies are giving all kinds of free money off the government. And somebody who is living on Social Security or disability, oh, you make too much money for help. What about the prostitute? And I ain't talking about the woman that pays for sex. I'm talking about the prostitute that the government pays her money to make babies. And give her more money. And if you don't believe it, go to your store at the first of the month. And go to your store at the mid of the month. And find all them with their grocery carriages. Two or three of them filled with meat. Filled with all kinds of groceries. And don't tell me I work for four grocery stores. And one, no, two de department stores. I know what I'm talking about. The stores have to hire or bring in more employees at the first of the month, at the midst of the month, for all the people the government is prostituting. Now we're up to 15 cents today. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, ye have not hearkened unto me in proclaiming liberty. That's the law. Everyone to his brother, every man to his neighbor. Behold, I proclaim liberty for you saith the Lord, to the sword, to the pestilence, to the famine, I will make you to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. I will give the men that have transgressed my covenant, which have performed the words of the covenant which they had made before me, when they cut the calf in twain and passed between the parts thereof. Now that's a divination. They will kill a calf and look at the liver or the kidney. And they would look for spots or marks. And by the identifying marks in the kidney or the liver. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. If we find spots, it's a yes. If we don't find nothing, it's a no. If we find lines, we're going to do this. If we find... Bruises. 
We're going to do that. It's divination. It knows how it's the cap. Aaron made a golden cap. Jeroboam made two golden caps. And there's a calf today that don't know how to spell cow. And he's a great cow of the Baptist churches. Where have they got to mention that company's name? For the golden calf with the with, with the chicken product. Make sure you bring your church bulletin and you'll get money off. Why is it a cow? When it's a chicken place. Uh-huh, uh -huh. you mean the golden arches? You mean Burger King? You know, the golden arches, if you turn certain way, be the golden boobies. Burger King, I got one king of kings. The prince, I'd rather have pork. The princes of Judah, he ain't gonna accuse me of being a Muslim. And yeah, we're up to 25 cents, by the way. The princes of Judah and the princes of Jerusalem, the eunuchs and the priests, and all the people of the land which pass between the parts of the calf. So they cut that calf open and they're like, you know, what do I do? I will give them into the hand of their enemies. They didn't ask God. Why wouldn't they ask God? Because God would say, don't take them back. They went to that calf because that calf would say, who cares what God said? I will give them into the hand of their enemies, into the land of them that seek their life. And their dead body shall be for meat unto the fowls of the heaven. You ever drive down the road and you see a bunch of black birds? And they're feasting on a dead animal? There you go. Vultures, scavengers. <clears throat> and the beasts of the earth. They're unclean animals. Every scavenger and bird and every animal that would eat a dead corpse is an unclean animal to the Jew in the Levitical law. Zedekiah, king of Judah, and his princes will I give into the hand of their enemies, to the hand of them that seek their life, and into the hand of the king of Babylon's army, which are going up from you. Behold, I will command, saith the Lord, and cause them to return to this city, all right, there's them bringing them back. I ain't done with them. I ain't finished with them. They shall fight against it. And take it and burn it. Oh, wait a minute, no. This is the army of Babylon. And cause them to return to the city. But that is right there is Babylon's left. They're coming back. They come back three different times. I, I was thinking of something else. And fight against it, take it, and burn it with... This would be the third and final time that Babylon comes. I will make the cities of Ju Judah a desolation without inhabitants. So the third and final time of Babylon coming and taking the, the final last king of Jerusalem and Judah unto the king of kings and the lord of lords. Judah has got, have you seen anywhere from God told Jeremiah, tell him to repent? No. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. 